What's going on guys, Dr. Root 7 signing in back with another PlayStation Vita tutorial video. Now this is going to be about an emulator, a multi-emulator that is, oh my god, I just died. You know what, worry not, I can always rewind and make things right. Alright, so this here is where I need to be careful, so let's just start running, you know. Holy shit. The one that I'm talking about is MU4 Vita++ and it has been updated to the latest version. It's a front end for Libretro course for the PlayStation Vita. The latest version is posted on the GitHub. So I'm going to be showcasing a couple of games along with the system specific features. What all you can expect after installing this. Install the latest version of the emulator which is version 0.24. Then you're gonna have to visit the GitHub. I'll be linking that in the description. So if you want to download the latest version, just go ahead and download the VPK. Place it on the root of your PS Vita's SD card by connecting it through Vita Shell and just installing the VPK through Vita Shell itself. It should be pretty plain and simple. Uh, let's start with adding the ROMs first. That is the most important thing. I'll just show you guys how the ROMs are added along with some of the gameplays and what you can expect. So let's just connect our PS Vitas using Vita Shell. All right, so once your PS Vita's memory card starts to show up, either make a proper folder, which I'm going to be doing right now, just make a dedicated folder only specific to ROMs. All these folders that are related to these separate platforms, I'm just gonna take them and organize them and put them in all in one folder. This is going to make things very easier for you and organized as well. Now there's a couple of things that you guys need to know. Let's just say you have some rare files which will hold more than one ROM file. Some of my rare files, they hold several versions of these ROMs. Now the application, the Homebrew app itself, the emulators, they are able to read the rare files or the 7Z files. However, if you have several iterations of these ROM files, then there is a high chance that you're gonna be end up with a black screen. I'm gonna show that to you while I'm gonna be on the emulator itself and right now I'm just explaining to, to you guys. For that, just extract and keep one version of the ROM file that is just like this, like Star Fox. The... However, if you have zipped files with just one ROM file, then that's okay. You can either keep extracted versions of the ROM files or keep them as is as zip or 7z format it's not going to create any kind of issues okay that's basically it when it comes to transferring the rom files bas files are copyrighted i am not going to be able to provide you any kind of information in regards to acquiring the bias files however i can just post the recommended bias files right here on this part of the video that you can take note of courtesy of retro game corps russ has made a very well made chart of the recommended bios files and i'm going to be using that itself so yeah feel free to pause the video or take a screenshot and just you know create a folder and and name it as bios and that's basically where you're going to paste all the bios files creating subfolders based on the platforms okay so we are on our playstation vitas this here is the mu4 vita plus plus this is the latest version by no word the first thing that you're gonna see after running the homebrew application is the main menu screen with all these platforms they have added a wide variety of course wide variety of platforms and if you press the circle button you're going to see the available course for each of these platforms like for snes there's like one two three four five like like five different types of course and same goes for game boy advance three different types of course neo cd there's only one core some for some of them there's only one core available for mega drive there's three so now let's just go ahead and run these games i'm going to make a comparison of this particular game so let's just start with snes super nintendo now if you press on x after pressing on circle now there you go this is the very first thing that you're going to be met with browse through your sd card till you find your roms okay there you go roms i'm just gonna head over inside there and look for snes and this is basically it now so the 7z formats they're in green and the extracted files that are in folders that are white the issue that i was telling you guys about multiple roms archive this is what's gonna happen it just couldn't read all of them and doesn't do anything now let's just go ahead and just select the just single rom file this game doesn't run too well 
So I'm not going to show you guys this game because it's not a very good idea to demonstrate a game that doesn't run too well. Okay, so I was playing Blackthorn and actually it's very good. It runs pretty well for any kind of system specific commands like the hotkeys or anything so the primary hotkey button is always the ps button along with the combination of the other buttons the system specific menu then you also need to press the playstation the ps button as well left and right shoulders the triggers are going to allow you to browse through the different tabs now let's load this game yes this is what i tested blackthorn i tested it on another core if you're going to press the x on an empty slot is going to save a state if you want to load or delete the already saved state then you can do so by pressing the x button first bring up the is gonna bring up the menu yes you're going to experience this issue as well Do not panic it totally is a normal situation i don't know if it happens due to a memory leak or something else all right coming back to the save state so if you press the x it's going to is going to bring up the menu you can delete this already save state you can load the save state or you can override the save state so let's just load it up as you can see there is a crackling noise and it's running at 20 to 25 fps and i'm running this on the Chimera SNES emulator. All right, and just select a different emulator. So let's just select SNES 2005. Now we're gonna do the same thing and browse our, and let's load the game. So even with SNES 2005, it doesn't run too well. So let's head back and try out another core. This time we're trying the Super Fast emulator and just load the game. Medna Super Fast, there is a difference in gameplay. You can notice that. Now it's running at 60, 40 to 60 FPS. So as you can see there is a change in performance now medna super fast emulator even though it's not perfect but still is way more playable than the other emulators compared now i have changed a uh, tweaked around with the settings a little bit here and there so under graphics i have changed the aspect ratio to 16 is to 9 and graphics shader to none graphics smoothened to none and if you head over to core i have enabled this option that says emulate super effects instruction cache now I've enabled this option and that's it. That's basically it. All the other ones are totally like as how they are. Now there's not a whole lot of games that use the FX chip. I'm going to talk about the system specific functions. Uh, the very first tab that says system, it allows you to resume, reset, exit. And for graphics, this is where you can change the display size, aspect ratio, graphics shader, graphics smoothener. Controls basically is where the controls are. Hotkey are the emulator specific command prompts, basically save state, load state, the one that I require is to game rewind. All of these system specific hotkey commands are executed with the PS button held along with the assigned key. Under the course tab, this is where you'd be able to select like frame skip and all of that or different types of four specific functions. If you are not too sure about these things, then don't mess around with them for options you can change the language independent core config enable rewind you can enable or disable the rewind feature you can also increase or decrease the rewind buffer size which is by default set to 10 i think it's better to set it to 15 or 20 after selecting the core specific functions it's always recommended you reset the game and then just run it again and under the about section you can just find the credits that's basically it for the system specific options now let's run some games and see how well they run
Now Mega Man X2 uses a little bit of the FX chip with specific boss fights. However, for most of the games, you can expect a decent experience. Now if you want to rewind, press and hold the PS button until the right joystick to the left. Let's just smoothen the graphics. There you go. Graphics has been smoothened up. Let's just try out another core. Let's just smoothen the graphics a bit. Now look at this, for Chimera SNES, there is not too many core options. There's frame skip, which is set to auto, frame skip threshold. You can overclock the FX chip. Now for Star Fox, I have overclocked it to the max and still it didn't do shit. Still, so I don't know. I'm just gonna set it to 20 megahertz and that's basically it. And also it says after changing the settings, the core settings, you're gonna have to reset the game. Let's just reset the game. Now, if you notice, compared to the Midna Superfast, the performance of Mega Man X2 is way better here. There was a little bit of sound stuttering there, but here it's not the case. So, you're gonna have to play around with the cores, like select different cores for each game, depending on your experience. So, that's a very good thing, that it gives you that flexibility of selecting cores. So for autosaving, you can go to options and just enable or disable the autosave feature. I don't know when that actually, when the game gets autosaved, maybe while you're exiting the game it gets autosaved. Let's just exit the game and let's see. Nope, it didn't autosave. But it should autosave when you're like exiting the game, but for some reason it didn't. Now for Game Boy Advance, it's always recommended to use either MGBA or GPSP. Now GPSP has a better compatibility rate. Let's start with MGBA. Now it says missing BIOS files. It doesn't really affect other than the boot screen. So as you can notice, there's a crackling noise, right? Even though the game is running smoothly, it's still not perfect because there is a sound crackling and distortion. Alright, let's just select another core, the GPSP. For the same game. Now this is perfect performance. No sound crackling, nothing. See, a little bit of sound crackling creates a whole lot of hindrance. It's always advisable to select the proper course or select the proper kind of settings for the course in some cases. Let's just check another game. Let's just smoothen the graphics a bit and load the game. Now it has become a bit hazier. For the SNES, the smoothening of the graphics, it looked better. But Game Boy Advance games, I don't know. It doesn't look too good, so I'm just gonna switch back to unsmoothened graphics. This looks way better. Now I wanna see where did it get auto saved. So as you can see, I exited from this game and it just auto saved while I exited. So you know what, let me just try it out again and just start the game and there you go. So exactly my point. For the SNES, I don't know, for some reason it didn't autosave when I exited the game. The autosave feature 
activates while exiting while you're exiting the game like in this case while i exited the game it just auto saved right at that point let's just play a little bit of super mario advance 4 That's okay, I can just rewind it back. I wish I could rewind some of my mistakes and some of my some of my choices. Recently I've been making some really shitty choices. I'm pretty sure I could use a rewind feature. I don't need a whole lot of buffer, but I do require a rewind feature. Let me just exit out of this game and it's just going to auto save the game. Okay, so that's basically it with MU4 Vita++, the latest version of MU4 Vita++, even though the latest version is version 0.24, which is available only on the GitHub at this moment, as I've specified. However, it's the same. It just added, I think, two more cores on the next version. Whichever is your pick, you can do it. I'm just going to show you guys before ending the tutorial and where you can download it from. VitaDB application. If you do not have this application, get this application. I'm going to be linking the VitaDB apps VPK link in the description. So there you go. You can find it here along with a whole lot, whole bunch of homebrew games and updates and applications as well. I hope I was able to talk about all the features, what all you can expect and do with this emulator. If you found this tutorial helpful and useful, make sure to drop in a like and subscribe. I'm gonna see you guys on the next one. Oh, so I just started playing on my Switch again and it's been pretty fun, it's pretty awesome. The Switch 2 is going to be released on the month of June. I think pre-order will be starting sometime in the month of April, April 5th. I mean, according to one solid rumor, it's going to be released in three phases. The first phase, when it's going to be released in June, is going to focus on the first party title, starting with Mario Kart, the new Mario Kart game, followed by the second phase, which will focus on the third party title, I think sometime between September, October, something like that. And the third phase, there is not much details that are being made available on it. Backwards compatibility. So basically, you would be able to run the Switch games. Tell me your thoughts about that Switch too if you're gonna be getting it because you know the first version of switch is <laughs> you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm saying uh, share your thoughts in the comments section more games that are going to be released 2025 even though i had quite a rough start but still in terms of gaming it looks pretty promising and pretty awesome share your thoughts in the comments section join my discord if you want to get better help with playstation vita contents i'll also be back with more freaking streaming as well let me heal up a little bit more and get back to my usual routine. I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Dr. Brute7 signing off. Peace.